Joining us now is Joe Cirincione, who's an expert on nuclear issues. Mr. Cirincione, Japanese officials are now talking about fighting two partial meltdowns in nuclear reactors. Briefly, what's going on and potentially how dangerous? This is an unprecedented crisis. It is extremely serious. One of the reactors has had half their core exposed already. This is the one they're now flooding with seawater in a desperate effort to prevent it from a complete meltdown. They also have lost control of a second reactor right next to it that is a partial meltdown. And there actually is a third reactor at a related site about 20 kilometers away that they've also lost control over. So you have multiple reactor crises at the same time we've never had a situation like this and before. And what does it mean if you have a meltdown of a nuclear core? The worst case scenario is that the the fuel rods fuse together. The temperatures get so hot that they melt together into a radioactive molten mass that bursts through the containment uh, mechanisms and ex is exposed to the outside. So they spew radioactivity into the ground, into the air, into the water. Some of that radioactivity could carry in the atmosphere to the west coast of the United States. Really? I mean, thousands of miles across the Pacific? Oh, absolutely. In Chernobyl, which happened about 25 years ago, the radioactivity spread around the entire northern hemisphere. It depends how many of these cores melt down and how successful they are on containing it once this disaster happens. Now, you, you, you talk about the, the possibility of a huge exposure. The Japanese officials so far have evacuated people 12 miles from these plants. Is that far enough? Uh, not under a meltdown scenario, and you've seen these evacuation radiuses extend as the crisis has developed. First it was two, then it was six, now it's 12. We're told by some reporters on the ground that actually 50 kilometers out they're being blocked from access. So the effective evacuation uh, area is actually larger than the official one that's been declared. Uh, put this in context. Japanese officials had been rating this as a four on a scale that I didn't even know existed of one to seven for nuclear mm -hmm. events. Uh, how does the situation in Japan as it now stands compare to Three Mile Island in this country in 1979 and Chernobyl that you mentioned in Russia in 1986? If it were to stop right now, four might be a fair categorization of this, a local event without significant injury. But if it continues, it will certainly get to five, which is the Three Mile Island uh, category of a serious event. We almost lost Three Mile Island. It almost went meltdown. It stopped at the last minute. That's the situation we're fighting to, to maintain here in Japan. I, I, if there actually is a meltdown, that puts it into a six, even a seven. That's the Chernobyl category, a serious nuclear incident with potential for large-scale loss of life. So, so what are we talking about 12 hours, 24, 48 hours, and, and what are the keys as to whether this becomes just a serious accident yeah. or a catastrophe? We're in the key period right now, so the next 12 to 24 hours will tell us whether the Japanese officials are able to get control back over these reactors or it's, a, it's gone, it's lost. The pumping of the seawater into reactor number one is that last ditch effort to try to stop it before it's too late. If they can succeed, if they can hold it for the next 24 hours or so, then these reactor cores will cool down and will be in a glide path to containing this disaster. Mr. Serencioni, we're going to have to leave it there. We want to thank you so much for coming in and helping to shed light, help us understand what's happening in Japan right now. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Chris.